Test one, test two. Hey, everybody. Alex Kazora, Steelers Depot, and I'll come back to do another Monday live stream. Test one, test two. Sorry about that. Had to turn the volume on my phone off, but I think we're still waiting for people to get here. Get our usual Monday live stream. Run this for about an hour till 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you guys seem to be okay without doing the, day, the game film stuff, and the more I've kind of tried it, I kind of prefer this method too. So I'll put up some combine numbers, some weigh-ins happening today of the quarterbacks, the receivers, and the tight ends. And we can kind of go through those and talk about that and do a combine preview. Hey, Mutated Gino, thanks for being here. Now, you're always here early and here consistently. I appreciate that. Same with you, Solarverse6. What's up? Hope you guys are doing well and this Monday. Again, you guys have a question, drop it in the chat. We're going to look over some combine information uh, today. Anything else you're going to look at, we can try to, to take a look at that. But obviously, combine uh, players will start working out on Thursday. They're arriving today in bits by position group. But uh, you guys have a question about the combine or anything else, free agency coming up, uh, draft, you know, it's not too far away. Anything Steelers related, be more than happy to try to answer for you guys. Paul Brown, appreciate it. Now you've been here before, so thank you very much for stopping by. So combine weigh-ins until we get some questions going on. Dennis, thank you very much for stopping in. Uh, quarterbacks obviously not going to really matter a whole lot. The combine weigh-ins don't tend to matter a ton for them anyway, just as long as it kind of meets the minimum thresholds, you know, usually over six foot, nine inch hands. I know a lot will be made about Joe Burrow and his nine inch hands. You shouldn't. Uh, he had no issues. Really hit LSU. I mean, there is a minimum threshold. Usually that is about nine. So he does hit it. So maybe like a Jake Fromm that's under nine. The historical precedent of quarterbacks with that small hands of, of succeeding is pretty low. But again, you're talking nine versus nine and a quarter versus eight and seven eighths. Not going to matter a whole lot. So from the quarterback perspective, um, doesn't really change anyone's value. Uh, everyone kind of really hit the boxes that they needed to hit um, overall. I think Steven Montez lost some weight. I believe he came in at the senior bowl around 240, I want to say. I have to go back and double check that. But he probably needed to lose a little bit of weight, a little bit too big. I would say, but a big guy overall at 6'4", 231. Sean Howard Sr., thanks for being here. Let's go Steelers, absolutely. Uh, if you guys haven't followed me on Twitter, you don't have Twitter or whatever, I will be getting my Steelers free agent wish list tomorrow, bright and early, on Steelers Depot. I'm going to break this up into by position group. So for uh, Tuesday, it's going to be just the safeties. There are six safeties that are pending free agents. Obviously, some may be re-signed. We don't know how that's going to shake out a little less than a month from now. But six safeties that I think make sense from a need standpoint, because safety I think is an underrated need, but also, more importantly, a financial standpoint where it's not going to be the biggest names in the market for agency as a whole. You have to think about these smaller names that are going to fit in the Steelers very cap strap situation, assuming that they tag Bud Dupree, which is almost certain to happen. So six names, varying degrees of youth and veteranship and skill sets. Uh, and, and, and potential roles, but uh, I'll have a list that'll that'll kind of tick off the safety group tomorrow, bright and early on SteelersDepot.com. So hopefully you guys can check that out. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, thumbs up, subscribe if you guys would like to. Uh, your choice again. So NFL Combine again. If, if for people just joining, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat uh, below. Uh, quarterbacks again, not a whole lot going on. Tight ends, receivers, obviously going to mean a lot more probably to what the Steelers will be interested in. Uh, before I get to that, Mutated Genome does ask a question. It says, assuming no lingering effects with the hip, do you think Tua will succeed in the NFL? I haven't done a deep dive into Tua, but yeah, I mean, I think everyone knows that the health is really the only issue, but that is going to be obviously the main concern, not only for the short term, how his rehab is going for the here and now, but I think maybe even bigger, there are some potential concerns about long-term durability and stability and, and how well will that hip be 10 years from now. And obviously when you're drafting somebody in top five where he's probably going to go or could go, depending on the medical situation, uh, you have to evaluate that and think about could he really be here for the long haul. So that's going to be the concern. Not only just is he healing properly now, which by all accounts he is, but what is the long-term prognosis and diagnosis? And really, and you're going to hear this a million times if you watch NFL Network or whatever, the combine is really most important for the interviews and the medical. Uh, the, the workout stuff, it gets put, put into the equation, but it's not the sale and all. You have a mountain of tape to go through to truly judge who the player is uh, as an on-field product. But good chance for coaches and GMs to, to talk to these guys, maybe for the first time or second time, and get to know who these guys are. And then the medical situation, which is obviously really critical for evaluating these guys and uh, players with past history or just, you know, even just 
other kind of structural stuff that the, the teams look at, and that stuff can can vary wildly. You know, one team can red flag a player medically, and another team may clear him entirely. So that's where you get a lot of variance into how these guys get evaluated. And Tua is obviously one of those guys that will be under the spotlight uh, when it comes, you know, from a medical standpoint. Uh, so we will get to the tight end weigh-ins. Oh, Dennis asked the question, says, what's your take on Ben starting to throw? I've been cautioning people not to get too excited since it's too early in the process. You're right, Dennis. I mean, it is early. You know, it's February. He's just starting to throw. But the fact he was able to kind of skip the tennis balls and the small objects and go straight to footballs is a good sign. Again, just kind of fits into the idea that the prognosis has been positive. Every, every sign's been encouraging. This continues that. So I'm happy. It's February. It's not need to be throwing lasers right now. It's a long process. We've got a lot of time to get healthy, but he seems very much on track, potentially even ahead of schedule. And so that's a really good sign here in late February. So I'm very happy. Again, with the combine of the tight ends, the first one that really stuck out to me the most is guy we talked about a lot on Steelers Depot and, and, and somebody that, um, you know, probably took a hit in terms of what or the odds he becomes a Steeler. That's Thaddeus Moss from LSU. And I knew he was not going to be a huge guy, especially from a height standpoint. Watch one tape, he's not exactly the biggest guy. But man, this number right here, 6'1 and 7 eighths, eighths is what he weighed in at. And that's just rare for any tight end to be that short. I mean, he was listed, I think, 6'3, 245. I figured he'd come in around 6'3, you know, 6'2 and a half, 6'2 and three quarters. But 6'1 and 7 eighths is. Uh, for Pittsburgh especially, and then just sub 32 inch arms, the Steelers generally go with bigger guys, taller, longer, and so it's really tough to kind of see Moss as a fit for Pittsburgh. Although he does check other boxes, just as somebody that at that stature, I mean that is, mm, I mean that's David Johnson type territory. When we talk about Steelers that have been drafted as tight ends, and he was kind of a quasi fullback who had actually really good length. I think David Johnson had over 33 inch arms, and, and Moss is nowhere near there. So that one really. I, I was really surprised by whenever I, I inputted this information today on Steelers Depot. By the way, uh, if you haven't checked it out on Steelers Depot, we do have this uh, combine results tracker. It's on the homepage. Uh, we'll be sticking it on and off throughout the week. So, you know, updating weigh-in information when these guys run and test. Obviously, we'll be updating that too. So bookmark this page. You can go ahead and go scroll through all the different positions we have and everything. So that's a really handy way to kind of keep track of some information because I'm assuming most of you probably can't watch the combine for hours on end uh, the way that we do over at Steelers Depot. So that was the big one was the, the weigh-in for Thad Moss. Corey, yes, we do uh, answer questions. If you have a question, feel free to ask it. Uh, that's what we're here for for the next hour. Anyone else that's in the chat, feel free to ask any question related to the draft, for agency, anything Steelers related is totally cool. So I'd be more than happy to, to try to help out Corey. But while you while I wait for some more questions to come in, other tight end reactions. Again, I, I went through just a really rough estimate of what the Steelers have, have drafted when it comes to tight ends. And they usually take guys that are like 6'5", 259, with 33 and a half inch arms and all, just under 10 inch hands. The two guys that really fit that mold the best, just again, on an on-paper measurable standpoint, is Notre Dame's Cole Komet, who came in a lot bigger than I'm pretty sure he was listed and what I expected, almost 6'5", 6'8", 262, 33 inch arms, 10 and a half hand. And Albert O, don't even make me try to say this last name, but uh, out of Missouri, 6'5 and a half, 258, 34 and eighth, and 10 and a quarter hand. So really good stuff there. Just from a pure measurable standpoint, those would be the closest to what the Steelers draft ideally. But some other guys fit too. I mean, guys that are pretty close, Adam Trotman from Dayton, uh, Jerry Pinckney from uh, Vanderbilt kind of fit well, Colby Parkinson from Stanford, checks and hits a lot of those boxes as well so i think the tight end group it's not the strongest i think it's a good class not a great class it doesn't have that top end talent but if you're pittsburgh that's fine because even that top end talent existed an evan ingram type not going to get to pittsburgh at 49 anyway so it doesn't really matter but bryson hopkins not sure what he weighed in at the senior bowl i mean he came in a little bit smaller than i expected but weighs in at just under 6'4, 245 32 and an eighth arm 10 and an eighth hand but again he weighed in at the senior bowl so not anything really surprising because he's already weighed in before uh paul brown says i saw tommy posted a draft a profile of Devin. Uh, 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 i don't know how to say his last name asai asai uh someone can probably check me on that but uh with him what do you think in the fourth round i, I yeah I, I defer to tom's report because i haven't watched him as closely uh, as tom has um but yeah got good size i mean six three a little on the shorter side but you know that's doable 257 with good length so on paper, um, I know he has made some plays downfield, so I can see that. I mean, it wouldn't, you know, I think he kind of fits just roughly, broadly speaking. So 
Uh, yeah, I think that is possible. Any surprises of the combine? Well, as I said before, with, with Thad Moss uh, coming in under 6'2", really makes it a tough sell, not only for the whole NFL. I mean, how many six, sub-6'2 six, tight ends are there? There are some, but not a lot, but especially for Pittsburgh, that likes kind of the more traditional height, weight, length kind of guy. Uh, I mean, they basically never drafted a true tight end that's been under 6'3". I think David Paulson was 6'3". Uh, and to have that arm length, too, that lack of length to be sub-32... I don't think they've ever drafted the tight end with that short arms. So that that's going to be some red flags. We're trying to project that Moss, a popular name at Pittsburgh. And, and I get it. And there's still reasons to think it could happen. But the way in is not doing many favors. Ali Arobi says, talking about Clayton uh, Claypool. Yeah, uh, he's transitioning to tight end for sure. We'll look at the receivers here in a second. Um, probably the feedback he's getting from scouts. But that can be tough because you're kind of in that in-between. So I'm sure some teams will see Claypool still as a receiver, some as a tight end. What do you want your weight to be at? That was an issue with someone like Jalen Samuels coming at NC State because what exactly was his role? How did teams view him? So that can be a challenge, kind of figuring out what your playing weight is and, and how you play bigger. Now, he's got to, you know, how well is he going to run? You can't expect him to run the way he would at 225, the way he is at close to 240 now. So he may not run great, but he's got to, you know, he hasn't played at that weight before, hasn't moved with that weight before, hasn't trained a ton at that weight before. So you do want to keep those things in, in, in check. And obviously understand it's a conversion. A receiver to tight end can do. It can happen. Darren Wall is a great example of that. But it's a tough transition. And it's a tough transition in general for any tight end. He's played that position for a while to come in and, and, and compete and, and show progression and contribute year one. It's especially tough if you've never really played the position before. But like Claypool clearly feeling he's going to be viewed as a tight end and trying to bulk up. So understand that. Surprise, there aren't any sub-240 tight ends this year. Yeah, I guess it's pretty close. you got Charlie T at 240. Some other guys, Harrison Bryant, you know, fairly close to, to that mark. Um, but again, you know, I guess that's just the way that it, it is. It is a fairly bigger class of tight ends, I would say, overall, just, again, broadly speaking. So there you go. Uh, Hugo Gonzalez, Alex, do you think TJ struggles to get to the quarterback when he's shipped by a running back or a tight end? It's something I've noticed a couple times. I mean, yeah, every... Every pass rusher is going to struggle when they're getting that extra attention. They're getting chipped or they have to wide uh, a line wider or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, everyone's going to have issues with that. I mean, it's all about time. You can get to the quarterback within two and a half, three seconds at max. And if you get chipped and that's taking a half second alone just to defeat the chip, then that's going to make life tougher. So, But then that's going to help free up somebody else to get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Or maybe the tight end is staying in the block, or he's not going to be part of the pattern, or you know, same with the running back. So yeah, there's a benefit to it, and, and obviously it's attention that's well deserved when you're talking about T.J. Watt. Okay, so tight ends, I've had the list up for a while. Let me switch over to wide receivers. Ton of receivers, one of the, probably the deepest position, uh, in any position, not just offense, but uh, the deepest position in this draft is the receiver class. Um... The news came in that Brian Edwards, I think, had foot surgery, so he's not going to be able to work out. Unfortunate for him because he could not work out at the Senior Bowl. He got hurt for that, too. I don't know if that's related or not, but uh, so that's kind of unfortunate for Brian Edwards. Maybe he can be there for his pro day, maybe, but he won't be there for the combine. Dragon Jay-Z says, who do you think is the fastest of these prospects of any of these guys? Um, that's a good question. I don't know for sure. I think Devin DuVernay is going to run well. Um, I'd have to kind of go through a list, unless you're talking the whole class, but every draft prospect, and that's really tough for me to try to answer. Um, I'm trying to think who might be some of the fastest guys there. Um, see what KJ Hill runs out of Ohio State. Hamler from Penn State. Be interested to see what those guys test at. Jalen Rager from TCU. Probably going to run well. Same with Henry Ruggs. Um... I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a name that's probably for the fastest, but that's kind of the fun of the combine. Is we'll get to find out. We'll get to answer that question by the weekend. For the tight ends, okay, you're asking for who's the fastest for the tight ends. Um, again, also a good question. I don't know for sure. I don't know if anyone's going to run some crazy number. Maybe the kid from UCLA is going to run well. I think Hopkins is going to run in the four sixes. That's what he told me at the Senior Bowl. See what Hunter Bryant. Hunter Bryant might have a decent decent workout. Um, that's a good question. We'll see what Trotman, obviously I'm really interested in what Trotman could end up running. So I don't know if it's going to be any sort of super, super sparky guys. Maybe I'm just missing someone. You know, I probably need to learn more about Hunter Bryant from Washington, but I've heard he could have a good workout. So that might be a name to consider as Bryant. But again, for Pittsburgh, under 6'3", just over 6'2", not the best length. Yeah, he's got decent weight, but, you know, it's going to be a bit of a tough sell in Pittsburgh. 
should the Steelers draft a quarterback this year? Nope. I'm just I'm focused on investing in in the roster around Ben. So many holes to address. No cap space. Only six draft picks overall. Really not interested in the quarterback. We'll see what Mason can do in his progression coming off his first year, really playing, you know, obviously his second year overall. But last year, 2019, was kind of a rookie year for him from an on-field perspective. And so maybe maybe a year from now we're talking about quarterback, depending on progression of Mason Rudolph or lack of progression of Mason Rudolph. But don't have interest in doing a quarterback right now. And the team's already confirmed that. So, you know, any, any national mock draft, and you're going to see him, but any national mock draft that says they're taking a quarterback, just kindly disregard that because it's not going to happen. Zach asks, who do you think, what do you think about going O-line in, the, in, in round two? Everything like Lloyd Cushenberry? Yeah, that's possible. Um, I guess generally the Seagulls' first and second round picks, obviously no first rounder this year, but even the second round picks, they basically always get on the field right away over the last five, six years. The the shift is basically since the fun to it after his rookie year, whatever year that was in 2013, 2014. Um, the second round picks have played fairly significantly. Uh, once you get into the, th- the third round, there's kind of a, a mix, and some third-round picks won't play a whole lot, and that's kind of where the the, the break line is. So, obviously, a cushionberry type or an O-line type, probably it doesn't have a great path to play right away, but obviously just one injury is all it could take for, for that path to open up. So, we'll see. I think it is possible, though. I certainly will not discount uh, taking an O-line, uh, an offensive lineman at 49, uh, Michael. Paul says it's an obvious film study where I'm trying to up my skills while skimming through the tape. What do you think? What do you look for and how do you determine if skills translate to the NFL? Wow, that is that's an important question, but it is a very broad question. Um, I mean, I look for anything. I mean, the way I do it is, you know, I have, my, I have notes on each game, so I'm not just watching four games and then trying to take notes off those four games. I'll watch one game, take notes, write down specific plays, do that for all. However many games I watch, three to five to whatever, um, and then I try to look for just what pops up the most in terms of the positive, what things do I write down the most, what's the most consistent, and then same with the negatives, what things are constantly popping up in my notes. And in terms of what to look for specifically, I mean, that can be a whole lot. You know, that's, that's a very long conversation, but read some of the scattering reports on Steelers Depot, some of the play pro, player profiles that I do and, and, and a whole team does. Um, that can give you an idea of the things that we note, the things we point out. That's, that's probably going to be more useful going through some of those, go through like a half dozen different positions, and that can probably tell you what we look for better than I can try to explain and try to rattle off everything uh, right now for you, Paul. Knoxley says Ruggs is going to be fast. Yeah, all these Bama kids, really exciting to watch. Ton of talent uh, coming out of Alabama this year at wide receiver. Yeah, Chenault. I forgot, I've forgotten. I've heard some Debo Samuel comps to Chenault. So uh, he got. He is bigger. He's, he came in pretty pretty big. Chenault's coming in at six six uh, foot and a half, two twenty seven. So pretty big guy. Again, goes through some of these names. Enzo Mims. See what Mims can run. Uh, I think a long strider. Not going to be a burner. But I think he'll have a nice workout. C.D. Lamb from Oklahoma. Tyler Johnson is not working out at the combine, at least not running the 40. I'm not entirely sure if he's working out, but he's not going to run the 40. He's going to do that at his pro day, he said. I always like these guys. I want them to run. If you're healthy, I want you to run, um, regardless of what your time is going to be. But probably signals he's not super confident in what his 40 time is going to be. I know Dave's talked a lot about Justin Jefferson. That was in his first mock draft. Both Jefferson's fan had a great week at the Senior Bowl, made some money down there. And Justin Jefferson kind of fits what the team looks for at receiver. So from LSU, 6'1 and a quarter, 202, 33 inch uh, arms, 9 and an eighth hands. So good good way in there for, for Justin Jefferson. Jawan Jennings is not going to run fast, but somebody that just is better on the field. You get a really. That's going to be the test of how many guys really watch his tape and know his game because he's not going to test twice. He's not going to run great four sixes, maybe. I mean, I've heard maybe even you know, probably, but I've heard basically maybe he's going to run somewhere in the four sixes, maybe a four six two, four six four, whatever. But on the tape, he's a really unique body type and, and one of those big physical slot dudes. It's really fun to watch. And I had a good week in Mobile as well, so that's a name to watch out for. Resign Tyler Medikevich, yeah. I wrote the article today for Steel's Diva made the case to resign Dirty Red, so check that out if you have not seen it already. I think the best fit for running back would be the guy from Florida State, yeah, Cam Akers. Have we the running backs way in today? No, they didn't run it way in today, so we can check that out. There's nothing on running backs right now. Nothing on running backs. Yeah, um we'll see. I again I don't I don't expect them to take a running back high. I think it is possible, but I think the chances are really remote, so uh, we'll find out. Corey says, what five common positions are we least likely to draft? Oh, least likely? I would say quarterback is kind of the one that first comes to mind. Um, once you get into day three, it's kind of hard to, to, to predict and project. I mean, there's a lot of options here. Corner, I guess, two. I'm not putting this in any order. The quarterback, I think, is still the least likely. 
Um, really from there, I mean, I think cornerback and quarterback are kind of the two that are obvious. Anything else I think is, is potential. Um, if they don't draft the running back really with, on day two, they're not going to take one at all. At least they shouldn't. So I guess you could kind of throw that in with that asterisk. If they don't take one early, there's just no good reason to take one at all. And I mean, that's really about it. I mean, I, I mean, other positions I could rank them, but I think the other ones are kind of, you know, you could see one, you could see an inside linebacker, an edge, a safety for sure, tight end receiver, uh, offensive line, obviously you should be drafted, you know, defensive line, replace Hargrave. I mean, you probably won't see an actual five tech, you know, four, I, you know, defensive end type of guy, but you probably see a defensive lineman in terms of replacement for Hargrave. So I think everything else is kind of on the board outside of quarterback or cornerback. And I think the chances for running back are there, but very remote. DN Steelers 0391, how do you feel about Robert Spillane, who also uh, over under 95 losses for our buck? Because I like Spillane, had a really productive half a season last year. I think he had 11 special team tackles in like eight games, which is just absurdly good numbers. So, um, yeah, excited for him. Um, but, you know, if, they, if you lose Medikevich, you do have a good replacement in, in Spillane. You kind of can say that. I mean, you want as many good confident special teams players as, as possible i mean it's a whole unit it's not just one guy and that's just a special teams unit but if you do lose medikevich you will have spillane and that kind of cushions to blow a little bit i thought he was successful uh, last year for the buckos over under 95 mm, it's hard to be confident i mean the, the offense is just so limited the pitching staff i mean they can't afford any sort of injury it's kind of bad right now the bullpen's up in the air i mean how are guys like Feliz gonna do i mean you get some guys back like maybe in Edgar santana but i don't know i mean it's it's i have to go over i mean hopefully you just keep this thing around 100 nothing too crazy nothing in the 110s but i'd have to go over just because i mean this team's been gutted i mean they're not calling their rebuild you know Charrington's not saying it's a rebuild but it is and that's okay and at the deadline they're surely to be sellers so it's probably gonna be even worse after july uh, so i'm gonna say around that hundred mark for, for the Buckos. That guy from Colorado reminds me of Jalen Hurts. Yeah, uh, Chenault's gotten the Debo Samuel, the Hurts comparison. Again, his weigh-ins for Chenault. And that's a guy I should watch. Uh, I don't know a ton about, but yeah, six, just they were six foot, six foot and a half, uh, 227. So, yeah, that's actually a good comparison. And Hurts was, uh, Hertz, uh, was uh, you know, hurt in San Francisco this year. But, yeah, I, I totally get the, the comp there. Here's a hot take as he goes take Colin Johnson, make him a tight end. Yeah, I don't know if they can do that whole conversion thing. I mean, that's just, it's, it's fun to think about. And Johnson, I get it because he's a big dude, you know, almost 6'6", 222. But uh, he's got small hands. Nine inch hands for that frame is, is unusual. I don't know. Uh, I hear I, I get where your head's at, though, uh, Dragon Jay-Z. He's got Steeler Nation highlights. I have Staking Handler at 49, Albert O at 104. Realistic places for him to be selected too high or too low. Yeah, I think, I think both make sense. I mean, I don't have a great exact you know, draft stock radar on either of those guys. We'll see what happens after you know, the combine. But yeah, I think I think both of those are reasonable to say. I don't think that's that's anything outlandish. or Steeler Nation highlights. Bruce Klingman, do you think Jonathan Taylor will fall to 49? Um, yeah, I think he will. I can't guarantee that. I, I'm kind of mixed on this game. Um, but I think just with the strength of this running back class and the fact that, you know, running backs have been devalued a little bit, teams will wait on a running back, that I think those guys will fall in general, and maybe someone like Dobbins or the Clemson kid will end up going before Taylor. So, yeah, I think there's pretty good odds Taylor will be the bo on the board at 49 for Pittsburgh. Junior question so far, in case you haven't answered it, favorite prospect so far? Um, yeah, I don't have a ranking. I really like Bryson Hopkins. I mean, that's kind of the tight end I've ever really circled as both a real, realistic fit for Pittsburgh and also someone I really like. Um, so I think Hopkins has, has, has been impressive. Um, I didn't have to look, though. I mean, you know, ask me those questions right before the draft when I've kind of watched a lot more of these guys and, and have a better feel of post-combine and all that stuff. But uh, I like Bryson Hopkins a good bit. Do you think we should re-sign Vance? Well, again, it's picking up the option, just to be clear on that, but, but point taken, Hugo. I think it just comes down to why did he struggle so much last year? Was he battling an injury? And if so, if he's healthy now, then, yeah, I, I, I get it. Um, if he's if his body's simply breaking down, then you probably need to look at moving on. But it does feel like, based on something Kevin Colbert said, uh, and I can pull up the article here, uh, he implied that, you know, Vance is going to be on the roster. They will pick up that op option. So let me pull up those comments. Um, it was just a real real quick thing, but it kind of did seem to hint at that the Steelers will be picking up the option on Vance. He's just talking about his general optimism, being optimistic for 2020. Uh, Colbert says, quote, I feel optimistic we will have Ben back. I hope the health kicks back in for James Conner, for Vance McDonald, for Juju Smith-Schuster. So the fact that he's including Vance in that conversation 
would seem to hint at at least that the advance is in their 2020 plans. And we'll find out soon. We'll find out in less than a month. But I do think Vance will be a Steeler in 2020, though. I will say if they if they do pick up the option, it's going to be very interesting how you then tag Dupree, assuming a new CVA does not get done uh, in the next week, basically, uh, because part of the pathway to tag Dupree, be under the cap, and make all the other moves you had to make, tendering Hilton and Fowler and, and Banner, that involved not picking up the option on Vance. And doing so, I mean, you've got to find another three point something million, I think, in, in, in space to do that. So that's going to be difficult. Um, we'll see what happens, but my gut says Vance.